Welcome, everybody, to the Fallout Voice Actor Reunion. We are so excited to have you here. We have a wonderful cast of actors who play the characters that you love. And this is all for Voice of Palooza and the Alzheimer's Association. My name is Tom or Robots. If you aren't familiar, familiar with me, I host the Fallout Lorecast podcast. I also run the Robots Radio Podcast Network. And joining me today is the man who has helped to organize so much of the Voice of Palooza stuff and bring so many of these people together, Wes Johnson. Wes welcome how are you i'm great tom and you know we know you're not fully robotic you're at least you know cyborg at the most because there's a lot of humanity to you uh <laughs> well, some, thanks. some people Palooza think i'm a, is synth. a great event <laughs> uh, are you yeah well, some well people say i mean so. we've got all sorts of things going on here i mean this is fallout after all we've got synths we've got uh robots we've got uh mutants we've got uh, all sorts of things here with us today uh and and i can't tell you just how delighted i am a that all of these wonderful voice talents have joined us to help fight alzheimer's disease which is what voice of palooza and uh fallout for hope are all about this month through the month of may we teamed up with fallout for hope with the emphasis on hope and today the emphasis on fallout because that's what we're going to be discussing we've got three four seventy six all sorts of actors from so many different games to talk about the characters they played to answer questions you might have but most importantly to drop the gloves against alzheimer's disease uh last year we had i would say about 55 different streamers from around the globe we had about 40 voice actors this year we've got over 50 different voice actors involved in this and more coming all the time 125 streamers and gamers around the globe are doing their own basically entertainment fun for funds as we try to raise money we did it in two weeks last year and we raised thirty-five thousand dollars to help people who are suffering from alzheimer's to help look for a cure to take care of families and caretakers who find themselves in just a hopeless situation as those they love are are lost disappear before their eyes before they're actually gone and it touches so many lives in america we don't talk about it because it's painful it's painful for families but i i know that there's so many of you who've been touched by it we hear the stories i know that it's touched my family i lost my mother my grandmother an uncle my aunt one of my favorite aunts a crazy aunt who uh probably has a little bit of shea goreth madness running through her now suffering from uh, alzheimer's disease and dementia and it just doesn't seem fair so we're fighting back every little bit that you give during this time helps if you hit i donate or i charity put that in there yeah. it's going to give you a link you're going to be able to put a few dollars whatever you can spare we do appreciate it because it all comes together all around the globe to help people who have no other recourse I didn't know about the Alzheimer's Association when I was first going through this with my family, but I did later. I did find out the resources that were available through ALZ.org and their 24 seven hotline that you can call any time of the day or night when you need somebody, when you need help, when you're just at your wits end and you don't know what to do and there'll be somebody there to guide you. So that's what we're working for that's what we're fighting against we're trying to defeat alzheimer's they're they're getting close they've got some medication right now they're trying to get past congress they're trying to get past the fda which will allow people to remain themselves longer to slow this down as we search for a cure we're doing everything we possibly can and we're doing it with fun just like today fun for funds with this wonderful panel with these wonderful voice actors and the tremendous hearts of all the gamers and streamers across the globe i can't thank you enough for everything you've done so far in about nine days well in 12 days we've raised over ten thousand dollars and we're continuing to move forward so yeah. let's keep fighting let's keep giving a black eye we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get a fat boy and we're gonna drop it <laughs> on alzheimer's disease that's what we're gonna do we're gonna and nuke I, alzheimer's I, I thank all of you for everything that you do thank you guys for being here that was beautiful wes um th thank you for being here also if you want to donate exclamation donate also on the bottom left side of the screen you'll see a qr code so if it's easier for you to scan the qr code you can do that as well and let's kick this off because well we have to start with wes we're going to go through and introduce everybody and they're going to give you a brief introduction of who they are and what characters they played how you're going to recognize their voices from these games 
games. And Wes, um, a yeah. lot of us are very familiar with you, but remind us again of the characters that you played in Fallout. Uh, I've been a number of different. I was all the super mutants you ran into in Fallout Three, and including Fox. If you ran into Fox, and he said, "I don't know why people don't attack us when you're around." And when I'm playing the game myself, I talk to myself and my character, and I go, "Because you killed them all, Fox. You killed them all uh, with his Gatlin gun." I've I've played folks like. Uh, uh, Moke phoning from Fallout 4, you know, with the Schwatters. Get yourself some nice hefty hickory and well, Silver Shroud, Mistress of Mystery. Uh, so many fun characters. Scribe Bigsley, if you ever want to get a nice cool drink of water in uh, Broken Steel. Uh, in fact, actually, we're going to be doing something on the 20th where we're going to be teaming up uh, the Silver Shroud and Mick Valentine for an old style radio program. And we have so many people who are going to be joining us. You're just not going to believe it. We even got Emil Pagliarillo, who wrote the original uh, stories for that, is joining us not only to help us put the story together with uh, with Kenneth Vigu, who does Fall Out for Hope and is an amazing human being and an amazing writer, but he's going to be doing some voices as well as Pete Hines and a lot of the people you'll be seeing here today, we're going to be doing uh, a lot of great things over the next month. So keep checking out voiceofpalooza.com or falloutforhope.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's move it on to James. James, introduce yourself and the characters hello, that you play. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, I'm glad to be here and be a part of such a, a fantastic uh, cause as this. Um, I did a lot of different voices on uh, Fallout 3 and um a lot of the dlcs and uh i don't know i guess you would know me i guess right off when you turn on fallout 3 i'm mr brotch so i'm right there in the beginning uh -huh. as the the teacher uh, which is actually my voice um i've done a bunch of other ca characters eulogy jones smiling jack ryan briggs uh, most people know me for jericho so if you've been out and about and you hook up with your guide out there, it's called Jericho. And he's out there telling you what you need to do, kid, to stay alive. Um, so a lot of that and uh, happy to be here, though. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome. And Chip, Chip, how's, how's it going, man? Uh, make sure you're unmuted and then uh, tell us, remind us who what characters you played. Um, well, I uh, played about nine or ten characters in Fallout 76, and uh, uh, Agent Jefferson Gray, Darius Angler, Samuel, um, Foreman Scarborough, uh, Daryl McDonald, and um, um, I'm probably most known for Graham, one of the super mutants. <laughs> So um, I also love meat, coincidentally, and um, I guess being from uh, from Texas, I uh, consider myself a bit of a pit master. And um, you know, I would love to share my meat with you someday. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome! And uh, thank you to Anonymous for your ten dollars donation. The donations are starting to come in, and, and feel free to click the link that as it comes up. Eric, you're up. Welcome. How's it going? Hello. Welcome. That's me. Hi, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here among a lot of amazing people doing all kinds of amazing things. Uh, I'm Eric. I am uh, a Fallout rookie, so I just got into the the this amazing group of voice actors in Fallout 76. Um, I am Danilo in the Pit expansion. I introduce you to the pit and all the terrible things that happen there and i am really excited i've loved fallout for years and being part of this game being part of this amazing group of people has been a dream come true to me so awesome really stoked awesome well welcome and let's move on to alex alex welcome <laughs> hi <laughs> finding the mute unmute button there you go oh hey guys what's up my name is alex Cazares. i am rose from fallout 76 and a bunch of other people like that one and the other one and the other one too <laughs> you don't remember them uh my you probably you probably know me from 
uh, the Casa Grandes or the Loud House as Carl. Or maybe you might know me as a baby. Give up the cookies! Ha! Or possibly your friendly neighborhood granny on various things. Anyway, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, this is the second time I've gotten the opportunity to talk with you, and uh, every time you open your mouth, it's just Rose. <laughs> and I'm here, uh, like, I think you are I would just, just Rose. I would just love, Alex, to hear you bring some energy to some of these reads. That's all. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> no, that's that great. That's great. I, I'll try to ramp it up next time, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit more. 11. You can get all the way to 11. Um, <laughs> let's move on to Chris. Chris, welcome. Welcome to the show. How's it going? I'm doing great. Pleasure to be here. Um, so what did I, what have I done? So since, um, actually, while I was playing Fallout 3, that's, I was uh, imitating the ghouls in the game and my buddy that I was playing with was like, oh, you're doing that pretty good. That sounds pretty good. And then I auditioned for it, uh, not knowing because they, they couldn't tell us what the, you know, when you get the auditions, they don't tell you what they are. There's no transparency. So I'm like, this is Fallout. This is Fallout. This is Fallout. So, uh, I ended up booking it nine months later, nine months from from the actual audition. So out of nowhere, uh, it starts to come. And then so when for, the voice was born for Fallout New Vegas, I did like 75 percent of the ghouls uh, in that in that game. So we had me in for a week all the way down here. I, I, how we did smooth skin. get that going? How about all those caps in my pocket? And then um, but I, I the, the the part I'm known for in that game is is Hadrian uh the the stand-up comic at the four tops who who's actually henny youngman but dead um wisecracking uh, uh simple one-liners and then for far harbor um i did a lot a lot of the mainers up there because i'm 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 cursed with being from being from new england and then i played malcolm who, who was a cannibal uh in the irradiated area uh, and he might eat your face off and then for 76 uh, I had a lot of fun doing uh, not only uh, uh, some Pennsylvania Dutch individuals, but some Yinzers and uh, and uh, some parts that I'm sure we'll talk about later that were cut, uh, but were were really really fun to do. Uh, that had a Vincent Price kind of feel. Uh, and then we got Vinny Costa, and then I, I live in Jersey, so I was able to play Vinny Costa, uh, you know, uh, playing with his underlings and making sure everybody does the job and buries the body low enough into the ground. <laughs> yeah, nine feet, twelve feet. What's the what's the standard now? Twelve, 12. double, double. <laughs> Gotta go doubles. <laughs> awesome. When, when you live near, near Little Falls, when you're close to Little Falls, you gotta go twelve. <laughs> right that's awesome I, I love i love uh learning more about each of you and how sometimes you played characters that i hadn't even considered that were like within your repertoire because the voices change so much depending on the character it's so cool so cool so th thank you for being here um welcome to tom tom you're you're outside hopefully you were able to find some food and make that all work out yes my side quest is uh, complete and i did find catering no nice. i just had some irradiated meat tacos <laughs> sweet, <laughs> and, sweet. And, and now i'm eating a irradiated churro so there you go <laughs> awesome uh, aren't they all know, I, yeah well that's true that's very true especially like later on when you feel it um yeah uh, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be on set on another project um uh so uh reporting from set but yeah i played uh night shin so uh there it is uh, on fallout 76 uh, it was an amazing character to play um and yeah at victorum yeah so well, there you go yeah yeah awesome well welcome let's move on to michelle michelle welcome how are you hi guys how are you i am michelle c bonilla i play scribe valdez in fallout um and the first fallout that i did was steel dawn followed by steel rain and, you know, as long as Blackburn has control in the overseer's office, I, I don't think we can lift it. You know, things like that. Give me a moment as I look at these terminals. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I did that and I uh, had great scenes with Tom Choi, who played my boss, uh, and that was great. I was also very honored to get a Society of Voice Artists a nomination for my role as Scribe Valdez it, last year. So I'm very grateful for that. And I'm so excited to have worked with Alex in the Casa Grandes. You know, I absolutely adored uh, being Mrs. Flores and uh, because Mrs. Flores talks like this and when she sees someone like Alex, it's like a family. <laughs> so um, I uh, have done that and currently I, I am in Call of Dragons playing Capra, one of the sitars in that game and um, uh, a lot of things coming up soon. So uh follow me if you want to but today we are here for alzheimer's and i am so grateful so if you guys can donate up there any amount will do because it all adds up so we can test these medicines and get them through and um, help our mothers fathers aunts uncles brothers sisters uh to uh stay with us that much longer Awesome. Thank awesome. You, Michelle. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Juve for the $200 donation and DA wow. for the $20 donation. We're already past the $200 goal. Let's just push it as far as we can go. We'll, we'll see where we go by the end of this stream. Everything helps. Let's let's do some good, folks. Let's do some good. Absolutely. So thank you very, very much for that. All right, Todd, you're up next. Todd, how's well, it thank going? Thank you for the hospitality, uh, the virtual <clears throat> hospitality. This is the best way to have a party because you don't have to do any cleanup afterwards. Uh, and we don't have to worry about street parking. Uh, in the Fallout world, I'm in Fallout 76. I play a bunch of characters, Jean-Luc Picard, Marty McFly, uh, Anakin Skywalker, uh, Russell Dorsey, Raider Punk, uh, to name a few. And I was assured that my characters would never meet in the game. Uh, I want to see if that happens. You all have to let me know in the chat if that does happen. Um, I think it's very odd that we are all in the same universe. But I think, for me at least, I've met very few of you in actual face-to-face, close-quarters combat. And so this is this is uh, a good excuse to come together and a good reason. And it's awesome that that we've hit the the donation mark because I'm always uh, I'm always excited to be surprised about the good that humanity has uh, left in it. And so it's good that there's there's a fighting chance for us uh, at the end of the day. And thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome. And Keith, you're up next. Welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Um, I actually, uh, I had no idea that I was even in Fallout 4 or Fallout 76 until I got this email inviting me to this panel. <laughs> so that's a thrill for me to just to be here in this room. And I guess I got I had a job that I made it into a game. I it's guess. weird. It's like they just recorded you secretly and then just used the dialogue in the game somehow. <laughs> uh, it was a, it was a super secret for a while. There was a long time when I had no idea that I was part of the Fallout 4 universe, but um, I guess I am. I do play Kellogg. Um, I kidnapped your baby and killed your spouse. That's awesome. Ooh. It sounded so good when you did it, though, Keith. But, well, you know, you got <laughs> you got to have something going for you. So uh, it's just great to be here. And I also play Vernon Drew in Fallout. 76 which again i didn't really know about until it came out um it's they're so secretive over there um which i respect um but still you know give a guy a, give a guy a nod every once in a while yeah you're playing um, like codename jello something like that right uh, yeah. right i got aspic mine was codenamed aspic um, and i was just thrilled to have the gig um but what our goal was what 200 bucks yeah, I started, out, I started out with 200, so just the initial. So we that, can we just add a zero and make it two grand? <laughs> Let's Hopefully. do it. Can we just go for the 2,000? Because I think that uh, if I know the Fallout fandom, everybody's got a little bit to spare. I know um, a lot of you are spending your money on video games and um, getting involved with other stuff, but this is where the rubber meets the road in terms of your health, your parents' health, your aunt's and uncle's health. Uh, you may not be thinking about it now, but you never know when something like this is going to turn up. And when it does, 
you will want to know that you've done everything you could to um, make sure that we did everything we could to wipe this out and stop this incredible suffering um, from happening um, to the families and to the people who are suffering from this uh, debilitating, uh, heartbreaking, um, unfathomable disease. So I say we go for two grand. Let's go for the 2000 Let's mark. And I'm going to challenge the fallout fans um, to step up. Awesome. Great Very well here. said. And really if you don't, thanks for the invite. He's going to kill your spouse and take your baby. <laughs> so, I didn't say that. I said that. So, I did not we, say it. We saw it in your face. I we did not it say it face. either. We know what you're capable of. <laughs> Past tense. All right. Well, thank you, Keith. And let's move on to Paula. Paula, welcome. Welcome to the show. Well, that wasn't exactly the introduction I was hoping for. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So some of the characters that I played um, was Duchess uh, in The Wayward. So that was my job to meet everybody and help them out and give them a drink and help them out. My buddy Saul and I were hanging out and just, you know, giving advice and shit like that. <laughs> and then I did a bunch of other things. I did uh, Gladys Filcher, and I don't really remember her, except there was cows involved. Mm. And uh, the, there was a bunch of female Mothman cultists and a lady called Ella Ames. Um, but uh, Duchess was one of the fun, most fun characters I ever worked on. She had some really great lines and just a depth of material i mean i had just session after session after session for her because i guess there was a lot of outcomes that could have happened and um yeah i just want to say i'm really really happy to be here and i'm and such a good cause and yeah i i say everybody you know dig deep if you can and donate because the help can be used happy yeah. to be here awesome awesome let's move on to jordan jordan welcome to the show hey what's up everyone uh, I'm in Fallout 76. The uh, Reuben Gill is my main character there. The very sad story, or sad, ugh, sad story of uh, what, Vault 51. Yes, Vault 51. So he was the overseer, and um, he didn't really want to be. It didn't go so well. It's a pretty tragic story. So that was an emotional session, um, but that, that was directed by the great Cal Al. So if any of you have worked with him. Yeah. He gets you to feel things. Why do I have to feel things as an actor? It's really stop making me feel. Ah, but um, I, I'm excited to be here. I also voice uh, Tyrone Hayes and Lucas, which I believe were like two, I don't know, punks or something. If I remember playing the the, the Hollow Tapes, they're like, I think they discover some dead people. And they're like, oh shit, what happened? <laughs> something like that. Something. Fans, correct me, or you know, just be nice. But those, it's just all in the Vault Fifty One. That's that's that is my little universe there. But. All that being said, I am honored to be here. There's a, I have heroes that I'm set next to you right now and friends. And so and it's all for a really good cause. So it's not just like, let's all hang out. You know, it's uh, let's raise some money. Two thousand twenty one hundred twenty two. We we need like a three 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 three. So if one of us could do that, maybe we could get to three thousand. We'll see. Hey, yo. Happy to be here. Thanks, Jordan. I'm sure somebody has that talent among this group. Um, but we have some new ones that just came in. Uh, Insane what? Pixels with $25. Emilio with 100 um, Oh, the text on my screen is so small. Why is it so small? Um, I think that says Jenna with 300 and Jordan with 20 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. I'm going to have to open this up rock. on a second screen so I can, so I can see it bigger. If we have to add another zero, I'm not afraid to do it. <laughs> When we get to 2000, we're going for 20. I only have so wow. many kids, Keith. Wow. <laughs> wow, that would be amazing. Um, I can't take them all. Jenny. I think the name was Jenny. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on to Craig. Craig, welcome. Hey, everybody. Um, I played Butch Deloria uh, the, of the Tunnel Snakes, Vault 101. And Butch started out as a bully, but he wound up a good guy because the player actually kills the rad roaches that are eating Butch's mom. And that's all it took to turn Butch good. That was really nice. Um, I've <laughs> it's a, a lot bad of... situation when rad roaches are eating your mom. When, right? the rad roaches, when the rad roaches are feasting, there's very little that can stop them. But because of that, I got to meet a lot of really nice people from all over the world. <laughs> who contacted me. And, and so being Butch was, was just a, a wonderful experience for me. Um, 
I am of a certain age and I've already lost somebody to Alzheimer's and now her twin sister has it and she's my friend and it's uh it's just such a horrible thing and i think that gamers you gamers out there who are probably the last best people on the planet because that's been my experience with meeting you um of course you're going to find something to give uh during this thing that we're doing and i want to thank you all very much for being the wonderful people you are well said well said well thank you yeah, for joining I us i mean this this is as craig said this affects so many people in lives and devastates the lives of people around them and uh it, it destroys families and when you make a donation here today you're 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 helping those folks find something a compass a base you're helping find a cure you're helping to uh push legislation it'll get those medications out to people and craig's right gamers are the best people on the planet wonderful human beings and uh, i've i've been constantly in all of your heart folks and one other thing i should say about craig man he can really rock that leather jacket nice. tunnel snakes rule craig <laughs> tunnel snakes rule uh ken just posted in chat from chad fault 76 podcast that we are up to a total of eleven thousand one hundred and twenty seven dollars and thirty two cents so far for the entire campaign that's great let's keep going uh one one more introduction lindsay welcome to the show hey everyone i'm lindsay rousseau um and uh follow i, I was in fallout 76 and it will always have a special place in my heart because i had just moved to la and this was the first triple a game i ever booked and so i was like ah! and of course like everyone here it was codenamed i didn't know what it was until much later but you might know me from <sighs> Because I am the female player character in 76. I'll have what she's had. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, was the female, I was the female player character in 76. So it was just lots of sessions of me breathing and swimming and running and jumping and dying. Um, but then I also played Abigail Poole. I played the DMV announcer voice, which was, if you've ever been to the DMV, it will terrify you. Now serving. <laughs> number 429 please make your way to the front desk uh they and i think wes gleason directed that session he's like can we make it a little more psychotic just a little more psychotic and, I was like, Great. and then like i don't know seven or eight different characters um it was so much fun so yeah and um personally um uh my my grandfather passed away due to alzheimer's um mm. 20 30 years ago and it was really hard to watch him just crumble and you know, we'd put him in an assisted living home and he somehow would always manage to leave and walk back to his house, the house he'd lived in for 70 years and wow. we'd have to go find him. So um, I'm really honored to be here and be a part of this because um, there's if it, it hasn't affected you personally, I'm sure it's affected someone, you know, so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people have stories similar to that. Uh, I have a grandmother who went through it wasn't specifically Alzheimer's, but it was a form of dementia and very similar stories uh, in my life. Uh, but thank you all for joining us. Um, I want to throw out some questions and we're just going to see where the conversation goes. Uh, many of you have mentioned that you did your roles, you did your voice acting, your actual characters, but you didn't know exactly where it was going to be in, how it was going to show up in the world. And, and then all of a sudden it's in a game like Fallout and it's amazingly popular millions of people are playing this do you have any stories that you can share about people you know realizing that you're in this game they're playing and like the surprise and like the personal interactions or maybe with family members who are like hey wait a minute you're that character i played in that i was talking to in the game um yeah. Lindsay's raising her virtual hand Lindsay uh sorry I'm virtually whatever no that's totally Honestly, fine like I am in awe of all these people here who have been in like the actual games as opposed to the 76 but um I actually went to Wasteland Weekend for the first time ever last summer um and for anybody who doesn't know what Wasteland Weekend is it is essentially a week of live action Fallout um or Mad Max nice. whichever you know it's, it's like half Mad Max people half Fallout people um and I was with some friends who do it every year and so we had like an actual storefront and we're hawking stuff and everything and uh i had a lot of people who were like i know your voice why do i know you because again it was like just 
a conglomeration of just fallout fans all in the desert for a week and uh so uh it was really fun to to see people who actually recognize this which you know came out years ago for me that's awesome that's awesome i have, I have a sweet story my nephew um can you guys hear me first of all Did yes yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> i have my nephew um we were sitting outside with my sister and uh, he's uh he was 15 at the time uh and we were just talking and my sister was asking me, so what have you done? I said, well, I'm in this game called Fallout 76. And my nephew was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, Fallout 76. I, I, he's like, what are you, who, who are you? And they're like, oh, I play Scribe Valdez. He's like, what? And he's like, and then I didn't hear anything. And he went like this. And all of a sudden he goes, he, goes, he, he whispers to his mom, very shy. And then his mom goes, uh, he, and before he even know it, his his phone was in my face and he hit play on some of my dialogue in, in story character stuff and he, he was that's you i'm like yeah <laughs> and then i was like he beamed and he smiled and he he looked at me like i could never do anything wrong again <laughs> so that was really cute that was really nice when they don't get they get it you know they they finally get it yeah that was really cute. for a 15 year old kid that's huge like I've been playing this kid, this I'm, I'm doing these quests for the brotherhood of steel and she's sending me out on these missions and wait a minute, that's somebody I'm related to. That's amazing. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. That's so cool. Anybody I, else have I, stories you want to share? Go ahead. I also play a character in mass effect called Thane Krios. And I get two responses when people figure out the characters I've voiced when they approach me and they're like, you played Thane in Mass Effect. I was like, yeah, like, oh, I cried when you died. It broke my heart. Spoilers. And then Spoiler. the other spoilers for like a 10 year old game at this point. <laughs> Listen, it's been 11 years, <laughs> 11 so. years. Yeah. I don't think I'm spoiling anything that isn't out there. Statute of limitations. The other folks that come up to me is like, dude, I played Fallout 4 and I killed your ass. Yeah. So, very different responses to the deaths of my characters <laughs> across video games. Yeah, I think that means you did your job well. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I'll be the receptacle. I used to hear my I used to hear my kids down the hall killing me all the time. <laughs> I think in some ways that's kind of therapy, you know. You're not happy with dad's decision, you just put on a video game and you kill him multiple times. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. James, did you have something you wanted to chime in? With? I, I did. I was I was doing a shoot, um, and this was an on camera shoot somewhere, and the director somehow through casual conversation found out that I uh, was on Fallout, and um, he was like, "That is my son's favorite game. He plays it nonstop." So he actually uh, called his son on the phone. And his son was at school and uh, he said, he's at school, so he's not going to answer. He says, but I need you to leave a message on his phone as Jericho. <laughs> so I leave, I leave him this message and Jericho does a lot of cursing uh, throughout the game. Um, and it was basically, you know, yeah, I hear your dad says you aren't doing your homework when you're supposed to do it. Well, let me tell you, kid, you're going to do your homework. If you don't, I'm going to come and see you. And then you're mine. And then he hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I can only imagine what this kid did when he, he listened to his message. and <laughs> After he changed his pants, you mean? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's, I, I'll tell you, it's 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 so interesting because, it, you know, I and I do a lot of the comic cons and and you know go and do autograph signings and so forth. And the Fallout fans are just phenomenal, man. They, man, <clears throat> so great. They come up, um, you know, for all the stuff that I give them. They actually give me stuff too. You know, I, they'll come in and they'll have. Yeah, I heard you were going to be here, and they. And they give me trinkets and and paraphernalia and you know just all kind of all kind of great stuff. The the fans are just fantastic. That's awesome. They do give you all sorts of things. They draw pictures for you. They yeah. do things. They'll even send you some fan fiction where some of your characters are with some of your other characters, <laughs> which is uh, 
odd in a flashback to the teenage years, I guess. <laughs> but Humans I think, are so I think what's cool about about the fact that what you were just mentioning, James, is that, you know, no matter where you go in the world, when you meet uh, that it's it's almost like um, the feeling uh, when you're having this interaction with fans, it's it's like a universal uh language like it's all the same like no matter where you go everybody is so happy and they and they they're full of uh benevolence and they have these great smiles on their faces and and i and it's great that we get to be a part of a medium that reaches so many people uh in so many facets of the the entertainment avenues that we find ourselves in because you know with, with something like twitch like this we can reach people through the language of fallout and and change lives with with this uh, fundraiser right here and so uh you know it's, it's great to be able to see that in action exactly what you guys are talking about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. craig did you have a story how did you know? I, I just, I, I don't know, just had a sense. <laughs> okay, this, this is a tribute to the power of video games. I was at a cocktail party um, not too long after my Fallout came out, and uh, there was a guy there, Mr. Video Game Professional. Even though, and he was no kid, he was like early 30s, and he had a crowd of people around him, and they were all talking video games. And yes, I beat that game in... Uh, eight hours and 14 minutes. I, I think it was the record at the time. I, I beat that game. I beat, I didn't even know what that meant. Beat that game. I said, what that guy's doing? And then the hostess says, oh, he's talking about, he's a video game player. He's talking about, but said, does he know that I, I was in something? Well, what have you been in? Well, I did this thing called Fallout. Uh, my character was Butch Deloria. She says, I'll go tell him. So the cocktail party goes on. And all of a sudden I see, I catch him on the staircase and he's all balled up in his little embryonic stage. He goes, no, man, no, man. I'm here with Butch, Butch Deloria. He's right there. I'm telling you, I'm looking at him now. So in one moment, he went from El Cid to fanboy simply because he, he met somebody who was at a cocktail party with him who did a voice in a video game. That's the power of the video game. Yeah, yeah. There's something about um, Fallout games in particular, but also role playing games and the way the stories are told and the fact that you are making the decisions and going through the story yourself rather than just watching a movie and that after you've been doing this and playing the game for hours and hours and hours, it, it, it inhabits a place in your mind where you feel like you know these other characters, like they're real people. And I have conversations with people in my community about this all the time. It's why there's so much fan fiction, <laughs> different qualities of fan fiction, um, but, but stories and, and art, and it's why these things inhabit a very meaningful place for us. And what you all mm -hmm. do is bring these characters to life through your real human emotions and all of that. And it, it really is an amazing thing. Well, the human emotions are very important in some ways. We did a thing uh, last year. Uh, it was it was put together by uh, Kenneth Vigio with uh, Fallout for Hope. And we basically uh, stormed the uh, the Capitol. We went up to the Lincoln Memorial and then we uh, we made our way. Everybody, all the players come out and cosplay and, and were dressed as Fallout characters, showed up there and marched all the way out to the uh, Washington Monument. And we had like 50, 60 people out there marching their way down. Now, what was interesting about all that, we, we had a breakfast earlier at the Celebrity Deli where they put together a whole menu full of things like Myler cakes. We had uh, stim packs, which were basically mimosas, but it was still lovely. It was lovely. And when we're down at the, the mall, basically everyone did a, uh, it was the uh, fallout five Oh, uh, group was there. And we, 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 we talked about ferret Bodwin, uh, one of the developers who had recently passed away and we had a circle. And it gets me choked even thinking about this when we, we everyone started talking about him. And I got a chance to come up and speak about him and the joy that he brought to the games, the joy that he brought to every day building this stuff. And, 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 and he loved the fandom. He would do podcasts. He would do characters. He loved the fandom. And discussing all this got me a little emotional. But I'm glad I didn't know one thing. And that was his wife, his parents, and his children were there. And they were standing nearby and they got to see the love of the fandom 
and how people felt about him in that moment. And it's that kind of thing. It, just seeing the, the emotion and the heart that the Fallout fandom brings, not just to this game. I mean, you go into this world, this virtual reality, and it's so immersive. It really is. You play so long that you end up dreaming in that world, but they take it into life. They take, you, you could, you could take all the bad things about fallout, all the bad things about this world and focus on that, but they focus on the good and what they did there today, that day, just, I mean, brings me to tears, almost thinking about it right now. Yeah. And, I had, I had the opportunity. Here's to ferret. Here's to ferret. I had the opportunity to get to interview him with Ken uh, a few years back and an amazing guy he's the kind of guy that you would want to be best friends with just having a quick conversation yeah. you're just like oh i wish i wish this guy lived down the street and we could just hang out um right and and you and he spent time working on these games for years he wrote many of the characters that you all have played and um mm -hmm. amazing amazing person and all of that goes together the writing the voice acting all of it together um so speaking of good characters that people love and evil characters that people love to hate <clears throat> I'm sorry, Tom. Can I jump in real quick? Oh, go. I got to get going back to set. Go for it. I just wanted to wish um, everybody to just uh, keep, please get those donations to keep coming in for this great cause. I um, just want to say this is Night Shin uh, from the Brotherhood of, Brotherhood of Steel saying at Victorium. And uh, yeah, just keep that money coming in for a great cause, guys. So, uh, thank you so much for having you guys. And uh, see you later. Thank Thanks, you. Tom. Thanks for being here. And uh, Break a leg, Tom. Go get him. Yeah. Is Tom not, is that it? I mean, is the, he's just not going to bring us any churros? Uh, you know what? St my, what I can say is, for the greater good of humanity, stay away from irradiated meat. Okay, yeah. bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Um, and uh, thank you to Jessica Starr for the twenty dollars donation. Um, Jessica, thank you. Yeah. So as I was saying, there's the characters that we love, and there's the characters we love to hate. For you, I, and I know actors usually will say oh it's more fun to play the villain but what about for you all like is there a character that really stands out that you play that you're just like oh i loved playing this character even if they were terrible or even even if they were awesome anybody have any stories uh, they'd like I, to share go, go ahead go who is gonna go chris chris go ahead go for it i can go if you want so uh i uh it, it's funny so for fallout for far harbor um I did not know that there was there was an Easter egg uh, that I was recording. So there, I, I did a character by the name of Bray Husky, who was who was uh, who owned the, basically this this like fish food uh, cannery uh, bi business that ended up um, he you know as Far Harbor got more and more radiated, you, you know there were four holotapes. So each one was like further down the line of the entire story about him being uh being irradiated and eventually uh consumed by a gulper but what what ended up happening uh is it's a um uh, i one i didn't know that it was a an inside joke for wrestling at the time uh the wyatts like so so bray wyatt and the four there was a four horsemen kind of thing. I wasn't into wrestling. I'm I'm old, so I was you know I'm a Hulk Hogan guy. I, I you know and Iron Sheik, I, you know I had no idea. So so they didn't tell me that. I don't I don't, I don't know if we had the writer uh, was around in the actual uh, in the actual session. However, it was an, a perfect example of like sketch comedy heightening, because each time at the end for each holotape. He's yelling at the holotape and can't figure out how to shut it off. And so each time I was able to heighten and get angrier and like more frustrated. And at the end, I'm being eaten by a gulper and I'm still trying to hit the button, trying to shut the <laughs> thing off. Um, so for, you know, and I came up as, as a sketch comic in the late nineties, you know, that's, that's why I do what I do. Um, so like that was just one of those things where uh, uh, it really resonated with me that we all had had such a really good time and just laughed our ass off, you know, during the entire session. And so and for a lot of the series, you know, we just, you know, I, I've been very fortunate where I probably had about five days where literally it was like laughing from the very beginning to the very end. You know, I'll tell you that like and I'm I. I, I on national radio, I was I was basically the Chris Walken guy for about ten straight years in sports radio, and they found this out. 
And this was on Fallout, uh, Fallout uh, New Vegas. And so we recorded maybe 10, 10 ghoul lines as, as walking. And so, but I don't think they got permission to put it in the game. It would have been a little difficult to get, to get it in there. Um, but that's like an example. Another one was, was the game, the game guide for, uh, for 70, for, for 76. I don't think they could, they could get it in because it was absolutely hilarious and could not, it was like too funny for the game. I, I, we did, we basically did like a takeoff of Vincent Price and, um, and, uh, uh, it was, it was, uh, who directed me? It was, um, Cal, uh, Cal, uh, uh, you know, we just couldn't get, it, it was hard to get through, through it, but that's the, that's the stuff I've, you know, it just, you, you have a good, when you have a good time like that, it's, uh, and maybe some of those people get to be murderers too. And so you get to have both, both sides of it. They're, they're not real. you know, you get to actually be the bad guy, the villain and laugh your ass off. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine some of those tragic situations can be so funny when you're in the midst of recording them. Who else has a story they'd like to share? Yeah. Uh, go for it. Uh, Eric. Yeah. So th this, this is actually, it's actually really funny that, uh, that Keith is here because, uh, when I first started in, uh, taking classes in voiceover i've been a fan of uh mass effect been a fan of Fallout for a long time um keith was actually a guest director in one of my classes at the voiceover connection in burbank and i remember i come from a uh, musical theater background so i by default going into uh voiceover i was a little too uh too strong with my diction and a little too projection-y. Um, and I had to kind of unlearn all that stuff. And I remember distinctly going into uh, this class, I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm really excited. We're going to be covering video game stuff. And I've never like thought about doing video games before, um, but I'm really excited to like bring this in. And I remember did the read and Keith was very very kind uh to me being a little too overexcited about it and he did say to me just just so you know for video games they're usually uh, a little bit more grounded very serious and some of the um some of the games i've done they're you know they take things especially for you know stuff like fallout stuff like mass effect they want you to treat it seriously and they want you to treat it as grounded and normal and you know personal as you can get and i was like okay cool i'm going to take this with me into every audition i'm going to take this into every game and so like Lindsay, fallout 76 my first triple a game and i was really excited obviously super secret nobody tells me what this is until i'm in the booth and then i get to have my meltdown uh, but I'm in this and I'm doing the character of Danilo and I got to kind of reach back and get to do this very grounded, very, you know, dark voice. And then I get this line that's, and I'm paraphrasing obviously where they're, where he basically says, a shadow moves wherever it goes and there's no telling where it'll wind up. And I'm trying my hardest to say this with a straight face because Danilo, even though he is very dark and he's very brooding, he's my favorite edgy boy. Um, he, he's just saying a line that's so like old time serial, like next time with Danilo in the pits, is he going to, you know, whatever. And I distinctly remember having that session with Keith and going, if only he could see me now saying all of this wonderfully, very serious and dark, dramatic stuff. So, yeah, I had an absolute blast playing him and being able to kind of stretch a little bit of my theatricality with it. So it was, it was a ton of fun. Yeah, that, that sounds is almost a sweet story. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds almost anachronistic. The whole like having to do the line dry, but you know, it's a it's kind of of another time. But yeah, you know, like, yeah. And we were going back and forth and we were like, there's I mean, come on, 
we 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 got we got to try and get through this take without right. making it sound like an old 40s serial and i'm like i'm trying yeah <laughs> yeah can't. yeah ss in so chat says fun. anachronism is a big part of all absolutely but you have to play the like you, you i'm sure you're playing the role going nobody talks like this right now but maybe they used to <laughs> you know and so you got to keep a straight face and really oh commit that's the fun part of it is that i'm a huge fan of old time radio uh, uh, yeah. as well and when i was working in production and animation i would get these cassettes cassettes um that said like episode 203 radio show and that was when they would record the episodes and when they cut it all together they called it a radio show and that was a light bulb going off for me um so when i went in to start playing Kellogg, um, I really did think about those noir. I mean, I heard saxophone in my head, you know, just that feeling of just like Sam Spade, very Humphrey Bogart um, without the accent, you know, but that was the feel that sort of right. down, hardened, worn uh, assassin um, was just straight out of film noir. So being able to have that to draw upon um, was just a gas for me. Yeah, there's, there's so much noir in that game, especially around that your character, uh, the whole Nick Valentine thing. Uh, then you've the got Silver, Silver Shroud. Shroud radio yeah. serials. Uh, the noir is just so thick and deep. But I, you were talking about villains earlier and and playing a villain and uh, i got a chance to play mr burke in fallout 3 which they came to me and said we want you to basically be like lucy and lachance that i did in uh, uh elder scrolls know, and oblivion. oblivion yeah and, yeah and then reprised him in skyrim but they said we want him to be sort of the lucy and lachance of this and i said well do you want the same kind of voice and they said well, we want it as close as possible so what i did was i stripped away all the i stripped away the thin accent the affectations things of that sort and took him more monotone almost like it was a film noir george raft kind of thing but kept it in the same vocal range you know the same character construct and uh as with any villain that you play, you have to get behind them. You have to believe in what they believe if you're going to be real about it. The the villain is the hero of their own story in every situation. So you've got to believe that the villain believes they're right uh, when you're playing them. So you don't think of like a mustache twisty or I'm just evil. The reason I'm doing this is I'm evil. No, they got their reasons. They got their reasons. And uh, I, I found it very interesting later that... Uh, uh, Mr. Burke uh, started sending love notes to the female. He's a creeper mm -hmm. as well as a bad guy. Started sending all these love notes to to the women players. If you come in as a woman player, suddenly you're getting these "What are you doing? What are you wearing?" kind of things from him, which is like mm, creepy. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting to think about this. I I, I kind of have to wonder if you were to switch it around, what filmmakers almost a century ago at this point would think about our portrayal and our use of their work in current modern day things like video games. I'm sure that would just blow their minds. They had no way to predict that this would even happen. Um, who has that? Well, well, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Wes. I was going to say, well, video games are getting to the point where now it's almost, we, we've got VR. It's starting to go. We're, one of these days, you're going to be able to be just standing right in the middle of all of it. In the meantime, because of voice actors and because uh, there was a whole lot of limited graphics to begin with, uh, the emotion and the, uh, the, the every breath you take, everything you do orally, audio wise, is what brings it to life. Because in our minds, we fill in all the gaps. I'll bet you look back at some of these games and you're seeing full range motion where there maybe wasn't it because your mind is hearing everything. Your mind is seeing everything. It's creating the world around you. It becomes so immersive that you can just live in it. Yeah, and, it's, and and can I touch on this? And, and I'm gonna piggyback on on Wes, and you know, listening to him talk about how he created the voice for his character, and he was stripping away layers, and and some of you add in layers when you're creating. Um, you know, one of my, I guess my pet peeves right now that we're dealing with in the industry, you know, is this whole AI thing, yeah. and there's no way that any type of programmed intelligence can provide what we do provide the experience the the knowledge uh the intuitiveness the creativity 
that, Absolutely. you know, you look at the the people who are assembled here and you you look at their body of work and what they've done and what they've put into, you know, creating characters for the entertainment of, of, of other individuals. But you're getting our life experiences. You're you're giving you're getting mm-hmm. what we have been exposed to, whether it was a TV show or theater production or or, you know, a, a film right. or a movie. And these are all things that we have absorbed, incorporated into our being and, you know, put together an amalgamation of, of, of things to create characters to bring these things to life. And just as much as the fans enjoy the work that we've done, the finished product, we enjoy the creation process. Mm-hmm. We enjoy the performance. It is a release for us also. You know, we get to say and do things that we would never be able to do in real life. Video well, games are the only we, place I'll I was ever say have six-pack abs. Yeah, we could, <laughs> but they'd lock us up. Um, <laughs> so, you know, just, just you know, looking at everybody and, and you know, just what everybody, I, I'm amazed. I am always amazed when I hear what my fellow talents, you know, create and put together. And I just, and I just sit down and go, how did you do that? Oh, what made you think to, to do it or say it that way? And just, you know, the whole creative process is, is, is just amazing. So, you know, my hat is, is off to yeah. everybody. And, and really Don't you cool. love hearing a performance that is just so tasty? You could gobble yes. it up. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to add on to that. So who knew fallout would have launched my career into doing into fighting and dying a lot in video games. Cause that's what I get cast the most in is utility <laughs> players and come in. And apparently it's a skill set that I never knew I needed. And now I have, and now I teach it because other people think I know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's, it's really funny when I, cause you know, fallout for that female player character, it was just reps. It was efforts. It was all of those things you had to figure out like, okay, how does this sound? Um, and then I started going in for more and more games and, and this is when the AI question comes in. Cause I can't tell you how many games I've gone into where they're like, okay, this is the type of weapons you're fighting with. Okay. This is how you die. And I'm like, cool. Do you have a ref for that? They're like, no, not really. We're not really sure how it sounds. Can you just make something up? And I've had that happen so many times where they're like, okay, you get cooked through the chest, you smash through a glass ceiling and then you get decapitated. And I'm like, well, mm-hmm. I don't think that really makes a noise. They're like, no, 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 but we need a noise. And so it's like so much of my work, even in just like fighting and dying and screaming and doing creature voices, it's just your imagination. I'm like, what are you going to do when you get an AI? And it's like the creators don't know what they want. They don't have a point of Mm -hmm. reference for it. And if you, the performer, are not in the booth to be like, well, I think it would sound like this. Like, what are you going to (laughs) do? Even when doing robots, someone mentioned we play robots. They're saying it was the Protectrons talking to the robo bearings about AI here, which was very funny. But I mean, you know, the Protectron robots have a weird kind of strange up and down nuka cola and that's the kind of thing that once they electro people have always said is that uh, an actual robot kind of thing did you program that it's no you have to perform that you have to bring something to it you've got to find the 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 rhythm and the the valleys and the and and the high points and all these things and ai is not going to do that for you someone can sit there and fiddle with knobs but it's not going to give you the same effect yeah, hey, I, L- I, Lindsay, t- touch on this real quick, because I, I would like the, the listeners to understand and I do a lot of death stuff too. <laughs> the physicality oh, man. of what you do in the booth. Mm. I'll be sweating. I'll be sweating after a session. Like, I think when I recorded God of War, it was creature voices along with fighting and dying. Like I was doing these weird demon creatures and then this weird like berserker owl creature that was like this shrill sound and like the amount of effort needed to sustain your voice, first of all, and then the movement you have to do to believably produce those sounds all while staying on mic, unless you get a lav, uh, which I've only had like twice now. So all while staying on mic and not knocking into anything. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Someone asked if we use props inside the uh, the booth on on the stream. And it's like, no, we can pretend we have them. We can imagine right. that we have them. But if you actually take a prop and hit some microphone, you will be killed by an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so on a can I ask a question, yeah, saying, Lindsay? Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, oh, go ahead Alex. Are you sure? Oh, I, I, let me just add on this with AI. And I just... Yeah. You can't, and I guess what everyone is saying is that you can't, you can't AI nuance like that. Like even 
Scribe Valdez in Fallout 76 that I do, the, the director is like, I feel that you're kind of getting, maybe you can flirt with them a little bit. Maybe flirt with the player a little bit. Like, what are you thinking that? Like, you know, like, it's not, it's just something that I'm like, yeah, I think it kind of, you know, you know, like he's, he's doing really well. They're doing really well. I mean, uh, let's see if, you know, and it's just, if you can add a little bit of that and add a little, AI can't do that. They can't take what a writer is suggesting and a director can pick up from nuance that's happening. And it's just, you know, there's, this is why actors and writers are, are so important and directors. This is why I love the collaborative efforts of all of us coming together. You know, I mean, there is, this is a beautiful profession unlike anything I've ever experienced. So, you know, I don't think they'll be able to really touch on that because there's just no way around it. Michelle, that's a that's a really interesting point about Scribe Valdez because uh, I've I've heard from other people that they felt like she was flirting with their character. I was. I just because I just was like I I took I heard what they would what they were saying. I'm like, can I can I just like be a little flirtatious? Yeah. You know, yeah. like I'm like doesn't matter if they're boy or girl. He, they, them. Yeah, just putting, putting a little, a little spank on that, a little bit. Yes, yeah, I'm proud of them. You know, what do you insinuate? You know. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it totally worked because a lot of people were like, "Is this going to be a romantic character?" And then she's not, and then it's like, "Huh?" It's, it's weird. What, what okay. I loved about playing Valdez is that she's other than the scribe that knows it all. She's actually very human. And although it's, not, I mean, I'm waiting to get into more games so we can explore some of this stuff because she, I feel like there's so much more to her that I wanted to touch upon and bring to it in terms of giving to the players that are playing with it and if they picked up on it. And thank you so much for saying it because I, I tried to sort of throw that in there. They loved it, you know. Yeah, people um, picked up on it absolutely. Uh, like, and, and she's also very funny. Yeah. Very funny. yeah, she she funny. comes across like a very real person, and Thank and then yeah. that's and then that's that's what you're all saying is that it takes a voice actor who's a real person to voice act a character that is going to sound like a real person. I saw on the writer strike there was a woman with a sign that said AI didn't have tragic childhoods. <laughs> yeah, <I saw> <laughs> right, yep. like like you have like human beings draw from real emotional actual real life situations and then they impart it into their characters and that's what makes the characters feel so real that's right and it can change on a dime yeah on a dime and 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 that doesn't make technological sense you know it might not get they might you know ai isn't can't do that for right. the players when right. they're playing that you right. know well it, it's getting to the point now too you've got to be very careful i've seen folks putting out uh, voice actors putting out some of these contract clauses that are being slipped in because people don't always read their contracts and what they're basically saying is we have the right to use your voice that you record for this in perpetuity and to use it for ai forever and ever amen i mean in video games where you don't get residuals and things of that sort it's pretty bad when they cut you out of the live recording in the end too i'll jump in on that um been working with a group called vocal variants um which is part of the national association of voice actors nava you can go to mm -hmm. nava.com org i think not um voices .org. You can, not org. thank you Lindsay. um it really is uh, Lindsay knows and a lot of folks that i have worked with closely know that if you do on a pcap volume a bunch of movements running walking leaping landing climbing carrying a gun firing a gun that that information gets translated into a digital version of you that they can then skin and create different characters throughout the game. Um, but actors have discovered that those skins are then being taken and put into another game. Mm. And a third game. Yeah, it's they just treat, treated games. like general assets, like a tree or a bench. Exactly. Yeah. And that is something that can very easily happen. And Lindsay's example is a great one. If you're really good at doing vocal effects, they can skin that performance with a new voice. They can skin that performance to sound like a lizard or and you are the person puppeting that voice so what we're trying to do simply put is to make sure that actors are 
reading their contracts. And if you're a union actor, um, the protocol is to sign the contract and then deliver it to the union at um, AI questions at SAGAFTRA.com or the or voiceover at SAGAFTRA.com. If you are a non-union performer, there is a, a writer on the Nava Voices website that you can submit that will protect you from having your voice taken and used in ways that you don't know about or aren't compensated for. So this is a, an existential threat to um, voice actors. And not the sky is not falling. Um, it's cracking a little bit, but it's not falling. Um, and it's time for all actors, union, non-union, to be diligent and vigilant about reading um, what's in their contracts and know how your voice is going to be used uh, and how you're going to be compensated and how it's going to be used and for how long and where. Um, that's basically what we're trying to put out there into the world so yeah, that that's your that's next that. voiceover job is not your last voiceover job. I think and that Nava. we're on the, I go, think go, we're on the precipice of, of, you know, something that we all aren't really sure of what's going to happen next. And to be prepared and be vigilant is the best thing that we can do as, as actors read our contracts and be prepared and and understand what we're signing, that kind of thing. But I think also the the gamers, the people who play the games, I think they need to be aware that this is what is happening and hopefully not mm -hmm. progressing. But they, they need to, you know, kind of understand that these performances that they love and these actors that they love are facing an existential threat, as it were, and maybe demand that they want humans and not ai to power their video games in every yes. situation with technology as it advances it can be used for good it can also be used for not good you look at what happened with james earl jones who's kind of gotten to the point where he can no longer voice darth vader but he sold the rights to his ai he allowed that he knew what he was doing is he sold this and he was compensated so they can continue using him in the movies now in one way that's very cool uh but that doesn't mean you get to do that with everybody. I think everybody needs to have, to have the kind of respect that they would give a James Earl Jones when they ask him about this and a contract is put forth and it's 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 in plain English and writing. And you have lawyers who can take a look at it. But sometimes this stuff is slipped through. Sometimes it's not even asked permission for. So, you know, you've basically the idea that you can just take a voice and do what you want with it is... Uh, it, not everybody can do, and I hate to say make it sound this way, but not everybody can do what the people in this panel can do, which is it, it, you take a voice and you make it human, you make it real. There's a reason why people keep getting work is because they're able to make something that, that transfers an emotion to someone who's playing the game, that they can read, that they can identify with. AI is not going to be able to do that. But let me you've never seen a corporation in this world right now who says, well, you know what? Uh, I don't care about, uh, I, I don't care that I'm going to be uh, losing quality. I want to pay the people uh, the right amount to do the right thing. And we're going to to get the best quality product we can. A lot of people are just like, you know what? Let's cut the cost and forget about the humanity. So we have to fight for our rights. And you're seeing it happening right now with the writers. And there's more coming, unfortunately. Yeah. So real quick to jump in here, we have to thank you. Uh, th we have to thank Parmenter for the $76 donation and Anonymous for $6, oh. which brought us right up to an even 800. So thank you so much. That's and wonderful. Can we hit can we hit a thousand? I know. I know that we were trying to get up to uh, 2000 there. And uh, uh, that's what Keith was, was wanting us to do. But uh, let's let's hit that 1000. Can anybody push us up over 1000 right now? And we'll go from there. Right. Just uh, 200 yeah. more dollars. I mean, really, if if 20 yeah. people gave us 10 bucks, that that's it. Um, this this is great, great help, folks, to the folks who are suffering from Alzheimer's and the families who are devastated by it. Uh, we can talk about AI for the rest of our lives, and we probably will <laughs> because that's where the science fiction world has taken us now but uh let's also talk about the human toll that's going on with alzheimer's disease and how it's hurting families and how you with your humanity are able to reach out and do something good by donating a little bit right here right now basically if you're going to go out and buy yourself a cup of coffee 
well, spend as much as you would on a cup of coffee. Just make a donation to, uh, you know, Voice of Palooza, Fall Off for Hope, and the Alzheimer's Association. And let's let's help some folks. Let's do some good in this world. We've, I, we've seen all the crappy stuff. Let's make good happen. And I think that it might be helpful for people that are here that maybe not everybody that's watching right now understands the complexity of what Alzheimer's does, what yes. it is, what are the statistics around the world and the U.S. Maybe some of that can be highlighted and let people know because everyone knows it's not good, but maybe no. people don't know the nuance of of how bad it is. 16 million people right now suffering from Alzheimer's disease. And that, that that's just the tip of the iceberg because it affects all the families uh, that touch their lives as well. And they say that one in nine, one in nine could end up getting Alzheimer's or dementia. And because of the way things are going right now, it could be even worse. I, I So many family members of mine have suffered through this and dealt with this. Um, and and it i just watched my my brother's uh, mother-in-law pass away uh, a few weeks back and having her at home as she deteriorated as she got to the point where she couldn't recognize people around her she was hallucinating she was screaming out in pain she didn't know where she was you eventually start losing control of your body uh, you 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 forget who you are the loves, the life that you've lived up until that moment, everything you've ever done, everything that you ever will be being erased and substituted with pain and agony for your family. And that's what we're trying to fight. And we're also trying to put together a support structure. Uh, the Alzheimer's Association through ALZ.org is there for people. It's there. You can call their their uh, toll free number. Go to alz.org and look right at the top of the page is their 24 seven hotline where you can reach somebody who can tell you anything you need to know. If you're looking to try to find memory centers, if your parents or your loved one need care there, or you want to bring somebody into the home, or you want to do something and find out what medications can help your particular family member. We want to keep those we love as long as we possibly can, we eventually become the keeper of their memories. We become the keeper of who they are. I'm tired of being the keeper of those that I love. I don't wish that on anybody else. I don't wish that pain on you or your family or our worst enemy because it's just the most awful thing. And to watch what's happening here through Voice of Palooza, Fall Out for Hope, Kenneth V, you're putting together these charities and helping people help people. The gamers all around the globe pitching in, doing their own streaming and their panels and raising money. Everybody fighting this disease. It means the world. It really does. It means the world to me that these people, these voice actors, take the time out of their busy day and come together to try to fight this, not just for this panel, that some of them are coming for multiple panels through the month of May. Because Alzheimer's doesn't rest. It keeps marching forward and it keeps taking those we love. And we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to fight back. And one good thing that you're mentioning, Wes, with uh, ALZ.org, for those of you, again, that are watching, it's a good resource because they, they have things on there like what are the 10 signs that you know it's yes. coming how what what's the difference between that and dementia and how is it diagnosed what are the treatments all that information that you can go on there and look right there easily digestible you can pass it to people in your life and it, it's it's a quick five minute read it's it, it, it's really fast to, to just educate yourself just a little bit so that you can spread the word and and uh, help folks in your life and and know what you're know what you're supporting so we got a number of other donations that have come in over the last few minutes. There's Chrissy with a hundred who says y'all are awesome. Anonymous with six dollars. Uh, Parmenter with seventy six. We've mentioned those before. And then some new ones came in. Um, uh, oh, this is all in a different order. Uh, Go to the toad board. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, we've got uh, Fractula with fifty dollars. Je uh, Jenny who I think has donated twice now with another $200, Anonymous with 10, and Whittlespeet with 10 more dollars. So thank you to all of you and for all of your support. And we're getting close to the end of this, of this fun get-together, this wonderful gathering, and we are currently at 
$1,170 total for this stream right here, just the last hour and 21 minutes. So thank you to all of you. There's still time to donate. Even if we end the stream and you want to donate, there are links on my uh, Twitch channel. There will be links in the show notes underneath this video or audio. If you're listening to a podcast version of this in the future, lots of different ways to continue donating. And while we're getting, we're getting close to the end, uh, Wes, go ahead. I want to mention, I do want to mention that uh, if you all are around tomorrow, uh, you're going to want to tune in because uh, at about 2 p.m., 2 p.m., there's going to be an interview with screen legend Adrian Barbeau. Kenneth uh, Vigue and I will be with her, and we're going to be talking about, uh, I mean, she was the overseer in Fallout, and th her resume just goes on and on and on. Everything she's done with John Carpenter, if you've never read her autobiography, it's a hoot. And then on Sunday, Mother's Day, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, this is all Eastern Time I'm giving you here, folks, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to have four of the main writers from Bethesda, including the lead writer, Emil Pagliarillo, are going to be with us to talk about the worlds and the writing worlds of Bethesda, where they're going to talk about what it takes to bring these characters to life, what they've been doing through their entire careers, and we'll be taking questions. They rarely do this. We've got things coming up with ESO to push the new Necrom that's going to be coming out in June. That's going to be happening next week. And on the 20th, we have some people we can't even tell you yet who are joining us for our radio program, which is going to be just epic. It's also <laughs> going to be live. So uh, that could be fun in and of itself. So we have uh, uh, just a lot of epic things planned all the way through the end of the month where we're going to have our voice of Palooza Prime. And I'm going to even reach out to some of you guys here because we're going to be doing an event on the 25th. It's a Thursday where we're going to get people to actually sign autographs for donations. So we're working uh, with Streamly on that one, and they're going to help get those autographs out to people. So there are so many things that are going to be going on. And uh, all of these folks, I'd love to know if you're okay with this, Tom, what everybody is going to be doing here and where we can find them and uh, give a little information so that folks can keep track of them. Absolutely. Let's let's go through the list again. Let's we'll start with James. Oh, um, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, TalkTime uh, VO and uh, on Facebook, actor James Lewis. Uh, I just finished working on, well, not finished working on, but I just had another video game that was just released called Romansylvania. Uh, it is available for download, PS4, PS5, and Twitch. Um, and I uh, just finished working on a new video game. Um, uh, called NDA? Dragon <laughs> Age. Oh. That's all I'm going to say. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, I know people are excited about finding more yes. out about that. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks, James. Uh, Chip? Hello. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank... Uh, Wes and, and Kenneth, and I appreciate you having me here today. And, uh, you know, uh, on, on a personal note, I'm going through, uh, you know, this disease with an uncle. And so just to hear the resources, because I, I don't know what to do, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Uh, so, you know, just uh, hearing the, or being reminded of the resources uh, is, is very helpful, but um career wise uh, I'm, I'm also a filmmaker and i just directed a movie with eric roberts the end of last year mm -hmm. and uh lovely man um we directed everything here in, in my hometown um everything on location so it's uh, called insane like me and uh should uh be coming uh to a streaming service or theater near you at some point in the near future so awesome thanks awesome eric you're, you're up Yes, uh, you can find me at that daring man on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I'm always doing stuff. I've got a podcast, Geek Explain, where we talk about 
comic books and other nerd things. So feel free to check that out every week. Um, I've also got a couple uh, on-camera projects that are going to be coming up pretty soon here. So keep your eyes out for that. I'll be talking all about that on the various socials. And yeah, hope to be in a lot more of these. Well, thanks for being here. Alex, you're up. Hey, guys, you can find me at Twitter and Instagram. I don't use it much, but I'm going to try to be better at Alex underscore E underscore Cazares. Uh, my most recent projects, your your babies might have heard me on Bugs Bunny Builders, Baby Shark's Big Show or Barbie Skipper movie. But if you're an adult, yo, 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 you might have heard me on Cyberpunk. She gives the rose vibes <laughs> check it out well anyways thanks for having me guys this was fun and informative <laughs> thanks thanks <laughs> that's great alex chris uh james i wanted to say that uh um amanda gardner uh was on a panel with me recently uh the creator of romancelvania so um wow. yeah she grabbed she grabbed the the, the lead uh uh uh, wrote the the lead vampire on that from from the audiobook world from from our um from our romance slash erotica uh, stuff so um yes well, yeah. <laughs> um yeah uh things in my life so i just cast my first video game um this year uh called rosewater uh with a lot of kick-ass actors in it and keith was wonderful in giving me some advice on how to do that the the right way uh in a little bit uh, a little bit ago um and that game should be released it's grundislav games rosewater should be out um in a few months um but then also i am uh i i'm a publisher now uh, in the audiobook world i i got into audiobooks about 10 years ago and I am uh, 450 books into my career. And when you get to a certain point, you either become a producer or if you want to be really risky and long game, you go, you become a publisher. So we're actually creating a, a regional imprint um, based in the Boston and New England area. Usually imprints in publishing are genre based. So we're doing something different. We're doing a little regional imprint. And if that works, then we're going to have lots of other great things to, to do. It's called Leonardo Audio. So people can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Boston Voice Guy. It's a curse, I know, but uh, it's me and only me, Boston Voice Guy. And then uh, Leonardo Audio on Twitter and Leonardo Audio Books on Instagram. And uh, we're going to be publishing some awesome stuff come uh, come the next few years. That's so cool. It's so cool here to hear all the different things everybody's into and all their other projects and things. Thank you for being here. Michelle, you're up. Hey guys, well, you can find me uh, on the Hulu uh, playing Sarah Ortiz on 911 Lone Star. Uh, we wrapped our season uh, this season, but we will be back next season. Yay! Um, you can also see me playing Dr. Elena Chavez on Grades Anatomy. I also have a uh, I also have an animated film coming out next year called Maxi Lawal, Drag Super Shiro, directed by J.P. Carlin. I know you guys all love him. And uh, I play Valentina on that. And I uh, have been doing another video game uh, uh, this week. I can't talk about that. And I uh, am a, I, I soon to be dropped sometime on Amazon, a, a series regular on a new animated, let's well, this is where you get into NDA trouble. Uh, I'll tell you soon. You can follow me at the Michelle C. Bonilla on Instagram or the MC Bonilla on Twitter. And I just love you guys here. And uh, to be among all these talented people is just an honor. And to do this all together for Alzheimer's and the Alzheimer's Association is really, really touching. And I'm always glad to be here. So yeah. much exciting stuff. So cool. So cool. Todd, you're up next. Go to AI will eventually kill us all dot com for the latest. Um, <laughs> or you could go to toddhabercorn.com. That's where all the social media stuff is and projects I'm working on and everything like that. And if you even go to that website just one time, you will have gone to it one more time than my own mother. So we can do that. I think we can make that happen. I think everybody can go one time. And uh, I mean, she's got a lot of kids to manage. I'm an only child. Uh, I don't know why she hasn't gone to it. But uh, check it out. Uh, 
In terms of stuff going on right now, uh, I'm the villain for the latest season of Danger Force that's on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, Big Nate is a show. If you've read the books, we're working on that. Redfall. Sorry, I had nothing to do with the problems with the game as it came out. I'm just <laughs> voicing in it. So don't get mad at me. Uh, and there's a lot of other stuff, as there are for all of us, which I'm so thrilled about. And we're all human beings. I, I, none of us have AI in us. And so that's positive. And go to ALZ.org. And thank you all for all your donations today. It, it really does help make a difference. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Keith, you're up next. Hey, that's me. Uh, I have no idea what I'm in. Uh, nobody tells me. Uh, I continue just to sign NDAs and try to make a living. So if you find me in something, let me know. I'm at Far O'Near on uh, Twitter, which was my Sherwood Forest name when I was a camp counselor. That's how that <laughs> happened. Um, or KeithFarley.com, K-E-Y-T-H-E. Uh, Farley.com, all the information about coaching, all the information about training, all the information about what I'm doing and what I'm up to is there. Um, and also my podcast drops on Sunday. Um, Live from the Lounge uh, presents the Rhythm of the Seasons. Um, you can find it at livefromtheloungepodcast.com. If you're searching for it on any of your podcast players, just type in K-E-Y-T-H-E uh, and I'm the only one that comes up. So um, we drop a new episode on Sunday about Mother's Day and gardening and um, the power of moms. A lot of good music, a lot of good talking. Um, I interview four amazing high school graduates who are going to blow your socks off. So tune in. Check it out. Moms are the best. Also, podcasters unite. Um, <laughs> thanks for being here. Paula, you're up next. Oh, hey. Okay. Um, you can follow me on Instagram or on TikTok at Paula Tisa voiceovers. Um, my latest series, uh, true crime. I narrate a true crime series that's on oxygen called living with a serial killer. I know it's a very inventive name, but it's pretty intense. These are real people. And, um, I have a couple of video games that I can't talk about. And, uh, <laughs> I also play grandma shark on baby shark Brooklyn on YouTube on the YouTube channel for Baby Shark. So I kind of cover a broad range. And you can hear me, um, TV shows, across, uh, TV stations across the country, I do a lot of news promo. So that's where you are. And not only that, that's Paul crazy. is gonna join us on the 25th for the signing party on uh, Thursday the 25th. So keep a look for that. If you I wanna would, get yes, Paula to sign I, something to you. Yeah, cool, yes, thank you, Wes. That's so great. That's it for me. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Jordan, you're up next. Yo, um, yeah, what to talk about? The NDA games, zuh, zuh, zuh. but the ones that I know I can talk about, uh, I can't say who I am, but Killer Clowns from Outer Space, y'all remember the 80s cult classic? I hadn't even seen it until about a few years ago, and then they cast for it, and then I booked someone in it. So, uh, can't say who, but that's coming out this year. I'm really stoked about that game, because it was fun to record. Um, it was recently announced, uh, I get to play Siegfried in Grand Blue, Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising, a big, uh, popular fighting game. And, um, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And yeah, I'm just honored to be here. I've, I've been directed by Todd and Keith. So this is just, and they're both phenomenal actors and directors and I've worked with Paula. It's just, it's just fun to see, you know, our friends here, all, all here for a good cause. So. But thank you everyone for being so vulnerable with your stories and because I am, I feel like I'm one of the few people who don't have any direct experience with Alzheimer's. So this has been very, very informative and educational. And I'm just, I, I love, there's so much toxicity in the gaming community. So much, we all know that. So it's just really nice when there's things like this that come together. It's and, a small amount, really. When you think about the, the mass majority of them, they're really wonderful wonderful human beings it's just mm -hmm. uh the vocal minority is a wee bit toxic yeah yeah uh, it's bit. the internet in general it, that's just how yeah. it is right yeah yeah well thanks 100%. so but thank you so thank you so much for, for being here thanks for the donations everyone this is awesome um and you can find me on twitter uh jordan wren half of my last name because the guy who has my full last name is an asshole <clears throat> and hasn't wow. logged in since 2007 but i'm not bitter uh <laughs> and how much can i buy him off for and yeah. I'm, I'm more popular popular <laughs> what a douchey thing to say i'm more active on instagram so you find me on there on uh, jordan's voice 
<laughs> Anyways, I'm going to mute my mic now. Bye. Thanks uh, for having me. That's amazing. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Um, Craig, you're up next. Okay. Um, I have a website, craigsecler.com in case anybody wants to check out I'm about 25 samples of my documentary narrations and some on camera stuff. You know, the more important thing is that my kids talked me into getting a TikTok account, which they put together for me. And I, I just went to it. It's I, at Craig Seckler voice. I think I mean, something like that. And it also has my pronouns of which I never put in. That must be from my daughter. She's he's all into that stuff. Um, but the one story I have about the TikTok is, uh, we, my daughter put it together for me and, and it went up or whatever you call it when it, when people can go to it. And like a thousand people went there in the first two days. And I said, man, this is unbelievable. Then Wes Johnson did what's called a duet with me, right? He did the whole thing himself because he's Wes and a hundred thousand people saw it. <laughs> so if you guys want to be seen by people out there, uh, what do you charge for your duets? I know you gave me mine. Oh, for No, uh, listen, when you got that adoring fan wig that I yeah. gave you and you actually put it on, that's all the payment in the world yeah. I needed was to see what that giant yellow troll hairdo because yeah. you have the, the best hair in the entire world and to put that on top <laughs> selfless you did no it ego me. here anyway uh for the people who are still watching please uh don't hesitate to donate and if not now to this donate later when you're ready to yeah. somebody else who's having uh, a charity event for alzheimer's and thank you all take care thanks craig lynn's uh lindsay wrapping it up yeah okay cool 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 uh yeah you can find me on twitter instagram facebook at lindsay rousseau as long as you spell my name right i'm the only one um it, just like keith i don't remember most of what i've done so you can go to my website or imdb and see my credits uh, i do have a couple big games that will be coming out who knows one of them's been pushed like over a year now so eventually it'll come out um you can always catch me in the transformers war for cybertron trilogy on netflix i play alita one and i am a regular contributor to the no sleep horror podcast and we put new episodes out every thursday i believe um i know there's a lot of big no sleep fans and then uh keep your eyes open if you're a convention goer keep your eyes open because uh now they made the mistake of putting me on the board of directors for nava and putting me in charge of media stuff so i'm uh trying to get um panels at all the good conventions talking about the impact of ai on performers so if everything goes well we should have a very very special event for you all uh for san diego comic-con so just stay tuned for that exciting well thanks Lindsay, and thank you to captain ultima who donated a hundred dollars and pushed us up to 1270. Uh, thank you so much we made it over you, that 1200 mark well past a thousand you all have been wonderful thank you for tuning in to this and for being here for the live stream and wes i'm going to hand it back to you to kind of wrap us up well i did want to mention i and i have to mention uh necrom uh which is coming out in june that i get to reprise from as mora for i'm very excited about that and we're going to have uh, both the dead we're going to have all the voice actors from eso uh coming in on the 19th and on the 26th we're going to have all the devs from eso all the big names are going to come in and talk about necrom and what all that means that we we had a great big party out in las vegas about three weeks ago with the unveiling which was just nuts and a whole lot of fun so that's going to be great in the meantime i want to thank everybody for coming here today the incredible do generous donations that you have made we're going to keep going through the end of may with voice of palooza and fallout for hope and uh, we're going to do great good for the alzheimer's association remember if you know someone in your life who has is dealing with alzheimer's just reach out to alc.org call their hotline find help as todd said educate yourself on what you can do it's all there it's all available to you and you know yeah basically uh chip i you should reach out to them as well it's uh, it's it's a devastating thing alzheimer's and it warms my heart to see all of you doing such wonderful things all across the globe to help us fight against it during this month of may as we fight for the first survivor of alzheimer's that's what we're here for to end alz 
So thank you all for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your donations. No way to ever repay your kindness. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And thank you to all of you, all the voice actors out in this whole community. Uh, loves your work. And the, the fact that you took time out of your day in order to support a cause like this is just awesome. So thank you for being here as well. And uh, to the community, thanks for being here. That'll do it for this this show and if you are interested in tuning into any of the other ones follow for hope.com has the entire schedule so go look that up and thank you to everybody who donated all right that's going to be it we'll see you all later bye everyone thanks tom thanks ken thank thanks you. wes see you guys bye everybody bye great hanging thank you all very much that's awesome